Happy Friday. It's my favorite day of the week, not just because it's Friday, but because it's Fiction Friday and I get to sit down with you and read a good book. I've picked out an awesome one for us and I'm so excited to share it with you. I'm excited to share everything with you, like reading Rainbow. Did you love it? Come on. It's kind of cool to think of a whole entire TV show with a couple different seasons all about my favorite thing in the whole wide world, reading books. I really do love to read a good book and it's something that I hope to be able to share with you through these Fiction Friday videos. This one, Freak the Mighty. It's one of the best stories I've ever read about two middle school boys becoming best friends. So get comfy, take a big deep breath. Okay, now you really do it. Go ahead and get comfy in your chair. Roll your head if you need to, shrug your shoulders, some of the seat work and breath work. Now take a big deep breath with me. Feels nice, doesn't it? Yeah, it's what helps you relax and settle into a good book. I'm going to read the first chapter and then I'll have it linked on my agenda so you can access the next chapters anytime you want. I also have Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone and The Hunger Games coming out so you all have access to books as soon as you can find them. So sit back, relax, and enjoy a good book. The link to the text is down in my agenda, so you can click on it and follow along with the words right as I'm reading. Have a great day, have a great weekend, and enjoy Freak the Mighty. The Unvanquished Truth I never had a brain until Freak came along and let me borrow his for a while, and that's the truth, the whole truth, the unvanquished truth, as Freak would say it. And for a long time, it was him who did the talking. Except I had a way of saying things with my fists and my feet even before we became Freak the Mighty, slaying dragons and fools and walking high above the world. Called me Kicker for a time. That was daycare, the year Graham and Grimm took me over. And I had a thing about booting anyone who dared to touch me because they were always trying to throw a hug on me like it was a medicine I needed. Graham and Grimm, bless their pointed little heads, they're my mother's people, her parents, and they figured, whoa, better put this little critter with other little critters his own age. Maybe it will improve his temper. Yeah, right. Instead, what happened? I invented games like kickboxing and kick knees and kick faces and kick teachers and kick the other little daycare critters because I knew what a rotten lie that hug stuff was. Oh, I knew. That's when I got my first look at Freak, that year of the phony hugs. He didn't look so different back then. We were all pretty small, right? But he wasn't in the playroom with us. Every day, just now and then, he'd show up, looking sort of fierce, is how we remember him. Except later it was Freak himself who taught me that remembering is a great invention of the mind. And if you try hard enough, you can remember anything, whether it really happened or not. So first thing, you're hearing me read with what's called my reading voice. That's part of the metacognition process. And I'm going to tell you some things that are happening in my big, beautiful brain. I'm wondering, why did this little boy want to kick everybody? What happened to him? Why does he feel so sad? Why does he not like hugs? And why do they call this other kid Freak? That sounds like a really not nice name to call my best friend, but then it seems like they're really good friends. So I have some questions going on in my head right now about the story I've heard so far. Do you? I hope so, because that's called your thinking voice, and that's called part of the metacognitive process. Reading voice, thinking voice. So I hope as you hear my reading voice with these words on paper, your thinking voice is activated. Let's get back in this book. You could remember anything, whether it really happened or not. So maybe he wasn't really all that fierce in daycare, except I'm pretty sure he did hit a kid with his crutch once, whacked the little brat pretty good, and for some reason little kicker never got around to kicking little freak. Maybe it was those crutches that kept me from lashing out at him. Man, those crutches were cool. I wanted a pair for myself, and when Little Freak showed up one day with these shiny braces strapped to his crooked legs, metal tubes right up to his hips, why, those were even more cool than the crutches. I'm Robot Man, Little Freak would go, making these weird robot noises as he humped himself around the playground. Arr, arr. He had robot motors inside his legs going, arr, arr, arr. and this look. Like, don't mess with me, man. Maybe I got a laser cannon hidden somewhere inside these leg braces. Smoke a hole right through ya. No question, Freak was hooked on robots even back then. This little guy, two feet tall, and already knew what he wanted. 
Then for a long time, I never saw Freak anymore. One day, he just never came back to daycare, and the next thing I remember, I'm like in the third grade or something, and I catch a glimpse of this yellow-haired kid scowling at me from one of those cripple vans. Man, they were death ray eyes, and I think, hey, that's him, the robot boy. And I was like, whoa, because I'd forgotten all about him. Daycare was a blank place in my head, and nobody had called me kicker for a long time. Mad Max, they were calling me, or Max Factor, or this one butthead in LD class called me Maxi Pad. And until I persuaded him otherwise, Graham and Grimm always called me Maxwell, though, which is supposed to be my real name, and sometimes I hated it, that worst of all. Maxwell. Ugh. Grim out in the kitchen one night after supper, whispering to Graham, and noticed how much Maxwell was getting to look like him, which is the way he always talked about my father, who had married his dear departed daughter and produced Eek Eek Maxwell. Grim never says my father's name, just him. Like his name is too scary to say. It's more than just the way Maxwell resembles him. Grimm says that night in the kitchen, the boy is like him. You'd better watch out. You never know what he might do when we're sleeping, like his father did. And Graham right away slushes him and says, Don't ever say that, because little pitchers have big ears, which makes me run to the mirror and see if it's my big ears that make me look like him. What a butthead, huh? Well, I was a butthead, because... Like I said, I never had a brain until Freak moved down the street the summer before 8th grade, right? That's the best summer. I grew so fast that Grimm said, we'd best let the boy go barefoot. He's exploding out of his shoes. That barefoot summer when I fell down a lot and the weirdo robot boy with his white-yellow hair and his weird fierce eyes moved into the duplex down the block with his beautiful brown-haired mom, the fair Gwen of Air. Only a falling-down goon would think that was her real name, right? Like I said, are you paying attention here? Because you don't even know yet how we got to be Freak the Mighty, which was pretty cool, even if I do say so myself. So, what do you think so far? Take a minute. I'm thinking, are you thinking? I want to know, what does Max look like? I want to know, why is Freak so small? I want to know what Freak's real name is. I, right now, hate saying freak, but I don't know his name. And I do wonder, how did they become Freak the Mighty? Take a look at that cover. Gives me a pretty good example of what their friendship kind of looks like. So that's chapter one. I hope that you had a great little adventure in starting off Fiction Friday. And thanks for joining in with me. Have a fantastic day. Remember, you're a genius just like I'm a genius, and you're a champion just like I'm a champion, and our big, beautiful brains are getting ready for I Learn coming up. I'll be talking to you all about that next week and cheering you on. Just do your best. It's literally all you have to do all day long, every single day. It's that easy, I promise. Freak the Mighty is going to teach you that, too. Have a great day, and thanks for checking in for Fiction Friday and enjoying a good book with me in the library.